Uh, Ritu, thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak to all of you here. I'm deeply honored and very grateful. I'm very humbled by the invitation to be here with you. I want to start out by talking to you about the way the world has changed. And I think it's important to understand the context so that when you people grow your business, you do the things that you do, you become entrepreneurs and change society, you keep this in mind. Well, the world has changed and the digital revolution has arrived with a bang. 250 years ago, a great seminal event took place in Great Britain and Europe, which changed the world forever. For 5,000 years before then, India and China were the biggest economies in the world, primarily because they had large skilled population and the economies of the world moved ahead because of human muscle and animal power. They were the two sources of motive power. So anything that you do, you require human beings, skilled beings, you require animals and harness their power. And that was a very, very different world. Then 250 years ago, the, digital, the industrial revolution arrived with the bang with the invention of the steam engine. Before then, Europeans had traded with the world, accumulated capital, they exploited the richness of the new world, the silver and gold they mined in the new world in North America and South America, the riches they got by trading with Asia, the riches they got on the spice trade, etc. they accumulated capital. And that capital accumulation led to investment and startups and people who created motive power and the steam engine. And that led to the rise of Europe. In 100 years, you know, possibly from 1800 to 1900, Europe dominated the world because they found the steam engine and created the industrial revolution. And the industrial revolution led to the domination of Europe, the decline of Asia, the decline of China and India, and Europe became the largest part of the world. Then came the United States of America with European uh, you know, capital and European uh, invention and machines. But remember, Great Britain and Europe led the way in the Industrial Revolution. And what did they do? They created a global supply chain to connect consumers and producers on a global scale never seen before. So manufacturers in Europe got raw material to the world through a supply chain, supply chain through steam engines, to, to shipping, through pipelines later for oil, and to creating retail, wholesale, uh, you know, warehouses, financial services, and everything else. So they created the infrastructure for the industrial world, which is there today, and connecting producers and consumers. And those who control the supply chain control the global markets. And then 20 years back came the internet. And the internet has changed everything. The internet has become a platform where the entire world comes in one single common platform. And this was there for 20 years, but has accelerated particularly in the last 18 months because of the onset of COVID and the lockdown that the world experienced. The internet is a platform where everybody can connect. To give some data, out of 7.8 billion people on the planet, maybe five and a half billion people are connected to the mobile, five billion people are connected to the internet, uh, and about four and a half, five billion people are connected to social media. And this is going to accelerate. And in the lockdown to COVID-19, COVID, COVID, uh, COVID you had uh, the world come together like nothing else. So today, you can connect to the great majority of people on the internet. You can get education through the internet. You can get your supplies through e-commerce. You can get banking transactions through e-banking. You can get your entertainment to OTT platforms and almost many things else. But the whole world has come together on one single platform on a scale and the speed that we have never seen before. And that is transformational and the world is going to change. In 2019, the world spent $2 trillion on digital transformation. Possible this year, the world will spend maybe two and a half trillion dollars and new business models have come together. And why is the world spending so much on digital technologies? Because new business models have come, the old business models are going away and new companies have come, et cetera. If you look at the top 10 companies by market value today, eight are digital companies. The only two which are not there are Saudi Aramco because there's a country with the greatest amount of oil in the world. And uh, then you have uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which is a very, very large investor in the old world, maybe the new world. And the OECD countries have printed $25 trillion of new money as stimulus for, the, for meeting the COVID challenges. And this $25 trillion of new money had led to a large part of the assets of uh, global central banks, of uh, OECD central banks, 
being ne carrying negative interest rates. This has led to interest rates crashing, 10-year bond rates in the US is about 1.25, 1.3%, never seen before. And 50% of the $45 trillion of government bonds of OECD carry negative rates. And uh, I don't think the global banks can reverse this $25 trillion of assets by 2025. So the huge amount of global capital and low interest rates, which is flooding the global markets, going beyond startups, going beyond all the digital companies because they are innovators, they are disruptors, and they're going to change the business model. And many of these disruptive capital investors have taken short position on traditional companies like uh, energy, uh, like uh, manufacturing, like uh, FMCG companies, and are investing in new edge companies, which are digital companies and startups. So all these trends are coming together. And also in COVID times, the world found that you could see the blue skies, you could see clean water in the rivers, et cetera, because pollution levels came down and suddenly climate change and everything else has become center stream. Sustainability, circular economy has become center stream. And this new outburst of capital has led to great innovation. People say that in a couple of years, 50% of global manufacturing and whatever human beings do will be done by machine. So we are seeing the rise of AI, the rise of machine learning, the rise of robotics, the rise of automation, the greater assimilation of technology, change in business model, and rapid change. Innovation uh, cycles have, have shifted from 36 months to 18 months for the last maybe four years, and huge outburst of capital is changing everything else. And that's the world that they're going to live. And that's the world that all of us have to operate. And that's the world that you're building a business models on the digital revolution and digital first, mobile first, et cetera. And that's the world that many people are changing their habits to because of COVID, and we're not going to go back to the old world. And today, there's going to be hybrid working when the world possibly stabilizes. 35 to 40 percent of people are going to work from home, and work from home has changed everybody's habits. And today, even if the world comes back to normal, work from home is the new reality. Global travel will come down, and the old business model of retail, of cafes, and everything else may shrink. It will still remain because we need human interaction. But this outburst of AI first, mobile first. I change the business model to the mobile. Everybody carries the mobile. And in India, out of 1.38 billion people, we have 1.2 billion mobile connections, 1 billion unique phones, and 1 billion mobile bank accounts, and 750 million people on the internet. India has changed through tremendously, and that's the world that it's going to be. Uh, China invests $65 billion a year on venture and startups. United States, 135. India has invested $70 billion from 2014 till now, and we have seen about $11, $12 billion of capital come in. And by the end of the year, we could be $20 billion of money coming in. And this has led to the rise to 62 unicorns. I don't know by the time I finish my speech whether one more unicorn has possibly come. It may come, it may well be true. 62 unicorns. India has 55,000 startups uh, who are created $350 billion of value with over 62 unicorns and maybe 150 sunicorns who could become unicorns in the next few years. And they created 1.5 million jobs. We estimate by 2025, India will have more than 100,000 startups creating 150 unicorns at the minimum, maybe more, and $1 trillion of value. This is based upon the huge effort of the software service companies. Let me give some data. Uh, today, India has, uh, you know, India exports $170 billion of software. Indian brain power, a few part of, small part of the brain power will export $170 billion of software this year, the largest exporter of software in the world. And our software export of $170 billion will be more than the oil exports of Saudi Arabia. So the dream of India where our brain power, a small part of the brain power can create income for us and revenue for us is coming true and it's happened today. The IT industry in India is about worth about $220 billion of revenue this year. And that is very, very good. And today, out of the top 10 software service companies by market value in the world, uh, five are Indian, of the top five, three are Indian, of the 2.8 million employees in the top 10, 2 million are Indians. Uh, and, uh, you know, this software service companies have created $400 billion of market value. This along with the uh, startups going to the IPO way, possibly the technology sector could have a market value of more than a billion dollars in addition to a billion dollars of unlisted companies by 2025. But this upsurge of value means India has changed. Business models have changed. Everything has changed. And you know we're not going to go back to the old ways and new business models are going to come. And all of you here who are entrepreneurs with the digital model are going to drive. And when you drive this, you when you want to succeed, you have to take care of customers. So in every facet of activity, banking, 
where we got the new banks coming and creating huge upsurge and great value in FMCG, where you've got the big, big companies coming and creating value driven by the delivery companies. In education, where the Baiju's and Ina Academy and Vedantu and others are creating great change. And in, uh, you know, in entertainment, where the OTT platforms are creating change. In every facet of Indian activity, in manufacturing, where new models are coming up, you're going to see change. And for all of you to succeed, what are the things that you need? Well, I believe that every good entrepreneur in the digital world should be a team effort. You need a visionary, you need a hacker, you need a hustler. A visionary who can bring things together and lead the team, a hacker who creates great technology, and a, a hustler who is going to you know, do the marketing because marketing and consumer connections are important. Whatever you do, marketing and sales are very, very critical. And then you've got to raise money. So the startups have to learn how to raise money. And money is going to be a differentiator, whether you like it or not. Look at all the unicorns today. What has made them the unicorns? The fact that investors invest in multiple rounds are willing to give money. And we've seen companies like Baiju go from, uh, you know, 20 million free money in 2012 to 16, 17, 20 billion. We've seen Paytm go up to maybe 25, 30 billion. You've seen a Flipkart, you know, get acquired and go up to 30, 35 billion. You've seen a Zomato go up to 15 billion or whatever it is today. You know, billions seem to have no value. And you have seen uh, Vedantu go up to a billion dollars. You've seen uh, possibly other companies go up. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you know, every other day, somebody was a billion six months back, they suddenly become three billion today. And why is that? Because somebody is investing. That means somebody is able to go get capital. So raising capital is going to be a key differentiator. The product that you have, the service that you have, the digital model is a big thing. And then raising capital is going to be a big, big differentiator. And then third, getting customers and the eyeballs and everything else. In the internet uh, revolution in 2002, 2003, people are valued based on eyeballs. And today they're based on the number of consumers. Look at Coup, which has come up suddenly to challenge Twitter. Look at the way everybody's going on to the platforms. So platforms have become the big story. SaaS has become the big story. Getting people together is a big story because the internet is connecting everybody. And that's a new model. And then lastly, you know, what will make sure that you succeed? I think the biggest thing that will make you succeed is customer focus and customer transformation. So long as customers come on your platform, you get people to transact with you, you get people to do, act, do active things with you. Look at CRED with Kunal Shah. You know, what has Kunal done? Kunal has created a new business model. He's got millions of the top 30% of this country come onto his platform and he's creating great value. He's sitting back and counting the money that comes in and seeing his valuation goes up and money coming in because investors are going to back people like Kunal and uh, Baiju and others who are there and getting the, the people to come and transact onto the platforms. So the platform business, getting people together is going to be the big way. So I want to tell you that when you build your business model, it has to be sustainable because without sustainability, there cannot be a business model in future. And a huge amount of the capital in the world will follow the sustainable business model. ESG is going to be big. So focus on ESG, focus on getting consumers in, focus on raising capital, build sustainable business model. And you can go to the IPO market. There are maybe 10 of the startups wanting to do the IPO market. And why the IPO market? Because you're going to get access to huge amounts of capital. Going to venture will get you access to a certain amount of capital, but doing an IPO beyond a certain size means you get access to maybe $100 trillion of capital that's available in the world. And more and more new cap source of capital is coming into the IPO market. And that is going to be a differential because this is going to be a capital-led game. This is going to be an innovation-led game. This is going to be a digital game. And what you're trying to do in the next three years is what people in the world world did maybe in 10, 15 years to build a global company, right? Infosys today is worth close to a close to $100 billion. They earn maybe two and a half, three $3 billion of profits every year, but they're worth $100 billion. And people are coming to them and buying the stock. And if you want to create a great company, it has got to be sustainable. It has got to be ESG based. It's got to have cash on the balance sheet. It's got to have real consumers and it's got to have a great team to execute. Relentless execution, creating new models, fighting innovation is going to be there. And innovators are people who understand new business model and way of connecting. Because in any business, there are th four things that are important. One is the business model. Are you innovative? Do you have a good business model? Second is the team. Do you have a great team which can change, which can understand, which can you know, pivot, and which can understand everything else and get the great takers? Third, you have access to capital. And capital is extremely important. Because without capital, you can't grow fast. And when you get capital, you must grow and do things 
in two years what people did in three, four years. Look at Licious. Licious started five years back. We gave the first check, 50 lakhs on 10 crore pre or 11 crores pre. Today, it is $700 million. And I hear there could be a unicorn close, unicorn very soon. I don't know. I mean, we are investors, but you know, you've got to talk to Vivek and Abe. But that's going to be a unicorn by December or January or whatever. And they're going to get capital and they're going to fight the bottle, the battle and create a new business model. And, you know, that is important, capital. And lastly, consumers and sustainability are extremely important because the, every business requires a consumer and the consumers have got to keep coming back. And consumers will come back if you've got consumer focus and you're going to make sure that people have a great business model. So I want to end here by saying entrepreneurship is an art. Entrepreneurship is marketing. Entrepreneurship is innovation. Entrepreneurship is relentless execution. Entrepreneurship is creating a great team. And entrepreneurship is about a dream of changing society, of creating something new, of disrupting, and of energy, of passion, and you know, doing everything else. And it's okay if the model doesn't work. Just pivot and try the new model on the fly. And entrepreneurship is about high energy and passion and the will to succeed. Let me wish you all the best and to say, India is changing forever. By 2025, we'll have more than 150 unicorns in this country. They're all going to create a trillion dollars of value. We have 55,000 startups today. 5,000 startups come up together. They created $350 billion of value. And they got 62 unicorns. By 2025, we'll have 100 unicorns. And the world is going to change. And you people are going to do. Thank you very much. Well, that was fantastic. Uh... Mr. Pai, as always, and very high energy, and I think very, very inspiring to all the startups out there who were uh, there in the audience and listening to this. So thank you for sharing. We've in fact got a few questions from the audience that have come in, which I'm going to request you to please take up. Um, so one of them says that you know, um, uh, some. Uh, so this person is emerging as um, as is an angel investor. So today, what does he need to know, or how has the landscape changed, and what does he need to be in control of? Well, as an angel investor, the first thing you must understand is before you invest, do the people who come and pitch to you have a business model? Okay. But, you know, it could be a PPT. It could be an idea because you are an angel, right? But the most important thing is you are investing in the team and the people. Are they going to transform? Are they going to disrupt? And are they, do they have the capacity to raise for the capital? The greatest failures happen because people can't raise more money. Can they go get money in the next round and the round after that? And today, to my mind, the biggest differentiator for the angels is going to be the ability of the team to raise capital. And once they have the ability to raise capital, because they have a great idea, they can execute well, you'll do well. That's the thing that you must keep in mind. It's very simple to me. If you're an investor, are they going to get the next round? And can they get the next round? And what do the next round depend on? Do they have a good idea? Are they going to execute it? Are they able to sell to new investors to come in the next round? Sure. And I think further this question goes that, you know, what should be the consumer metrics or analytics they should apply as an angel investor uh, for a startup? You know, you're not going to have consumer metrics as an angel, right? What do you have? A PPT, a group of people who come and sell. I remember, uh, you know, we have Vivek and uh, Abe coming to us and trying to sell licious. The first meeting did not go well. He said, great idea, but you know, come back and give us some more meat. Of course, they are in the fresh, uh, deliver of fresh meat and great stuff. Uh, so they came back, they had perseverance, they came back and they sold the idea, said, this is what we're going to do, they're going to transform. And we saw the energy and the passion and said, okay, we are investors. And they executed to perfection. But at yeah. the point of investment, what did we see? What did I see? I saw two wonderful people who had this passion and the energy to change the business model and who had a particular model. That's all. And what are the custom metrics you're going to invest in? There's nothing. Just two people. Passion, energy, idea, and said, we're going to do it. Sure. Uh, so there's another question uh, which goes that how technology and education will further uh, change the future of our country. I guess they mean post the pandemic. Technology has changed the world. Let's be very clear. The world is changed forever. The digital revolution has been there. I explained to you how the world has changed. Please understand that the world has changed forever. Okay, we're all technology-led, AI, machine learning, business model, digital, mobile, etc. Is in the world, and if you don't understand that, you're going to be left behind. And what about education? Well, young people talk to young people. How they're getting education? What they're thinking, etc. Now, 
education models have changed. We are in the digital world for education. We were all, I grew up in education 2.0. 2.0 is what you go to a classroom, there's a teacher who's read the book, the teacher teaches, you take the notes, you pass an examination, you get a certificate, he says what you are. That's no longer relevant because all the information they give you is on Google. What is it the teachers? You know much more than the teachers. You just Google and ask questions, you get everything. The world's accumulated knowledge is available on the internet. So what is the teacher going to teach you? But the teacher should teach you problem solving skills. How to use all that information? How do you apply it? And how do you make sure that you can solve life's problems? And how can you communicate? And how can you be a problem solver? That is the biggest skill that you should have. And that's the biggest skill that's going to be important in future, right? And for you to succeed, you must analyze problems. You must analyze the data, come out with solution. Problem solving skills, the biggest asset you and I can have to succeed. Sure. Um, so the next question is that recently we have found uh, funding in D2C and small box retail ideas happening. Um, do you think the SMEs and innovative products and with innovative products and services are now likely to find inclusion in the funding ambit? Yes. You see, why do people invest? There are only two things that will make investment, fear and greed. Fear of being left behind because the world is changing and greed because you want to make money. Now you as an entrepreneur for any business should be able to capitalize that and go to an angel or go to investor and say, hey, this is what I found. This is my business model. This is the idea that I got and this is the way I'm going to change. And this is how I'm going to get value. And your passion and energy should convince the person, this is a person worth banking. Let me put some money, right? Now that's important. Now, you could have a great idea which you think will transform, but you can't sell that idea. Nobody's going to give you money. So learn how to market, how to raise capital. All right? That's all. So there's another one uh, about cryptocurrencies um, saying that, you know, they are now slowly uh, becoming acceptable. A lot of brands are now accepting cryptocurrencies. Do you think it's here to stay or it's just a fad? No, I think cryptocurrency is there to stay. But the use as currency, I'm not very sure because governments and central bankers are not going to allow them to grow. Yeah. If the US goes after them, the Fed goes after them and puts in regulation, you know, there'll be trouble. But the underlying blockchain technology and the underlying technology is going to stay. The key thing is check up what is the underlying technology, whether the technology will say whether it's going to be used. Now tell me, will you use a Bitcoin for payment? You could. Why are people buying Bitcoin? Because they're buying Bitcoin as an asset class for investment. They're not buying Bitcoin because you can pay for a car. Because, you know, if you want to pay for a car, the Bitcoin price goes from 10,000 to 50,000 in three weeks. Now, what will Elon Musk do? Okay, the Bitcoin was worth 10,000. Now it's worth 50,000. It could be come back to 10,000 day after, right? He doesn't know. So there has to be a market. The market has to be stable and that is unstable. That's why he, he said, I'm going to buy Bitcoin. He made a lot of money. He probably sold it and said, I'm not going to use Bitcoin again. Correct? So cryptocurrency as an asset class is something that is there for an investment like gold, like silver, like stocks. That's what people are looking at today. Are they looking at it as a currency? I don't think so. So we've got to be careful, but they're here to stay. Um, so, so I think we'll take this as a final question. It says that um, I am getting m and offers for my um, early stage startup. Is it better for me to take it up or wait it out? Well, I think, you know, if you are looking to build a great company, stick on. If you think that you're realizing great value and you can use the capital, better sell. Let me tell you one thing, my personal view. Everything in life is for sale, except the one you love. Because you can't keep falling in love again and again. Everything else, business, houses, cars, everything else. If you get a great price, sell it. Now, is the price a great price? That's the judgment that you have to offer. And once you do something, no regrets, right? No regrets. Look, we sold a bit of uh, Baiju long back. And if we held it, we'd be billionaires by now. But we sold it because we wanted some money. And we still had, ba had Baiju later, right? You know, uh, people had Infosys at 100 crore valuation. Many people bought the share, kept it today. It's worth 100 billion. Correct? They just logged it away and kept it. Now, where the smart investors, I don't want to say whether they're smart or not. The fact is they didn't sell. They still got it and they're billionaires. There are people who bought it, who made 40% return, sold it. And now they're regretting. If they held on, it'll be worth so much else, right? 
So what is the judgment you're going to offer? Is the judgment that you make, correct? And you know, you stick to the judgment. Sure. Thanks very much, sir. I think uh, uh, you know you give tough answers, but they are always right, bang on. And uh, you know, as entrepreneurs, always there there are tough choices to be made. And um, but thank you so much for sharing these wonderful insights.